What's up everyone? Welcome back to this channel and what the hell is happening with Ethereum? Should you buy it? Should you sell it? Why is it risky to buy Ethereum right now? I will tell you all of that in this video and I will also talk about Bitcoin and what I'm doing there and what my strategies are doing because as you know, if you are not a returning viewer, I am trading based on automations. I'm actually not touching the buy and sell button whatsoever. I have automated the full process for some while now and I'm making great profits with that. I am a trend following guy, not trading a lot and leaving it to mathematics and my algorithms that I've developed myself. Okay, having said all that, let's look at Ethereum and let's see what's happening over there. By the way, if you're asking yourself, what the hell is Michael doing? Where is he right now? Uh, well, I'm in Italy, in Tuscany. We are on vacation, uh, but I still thought I have to share with you what I believe is happening in the markets right now because I didn't come to you on Tuesday as usual because I had ultra bad reception, couldn't even upload anything, couldn't even browse the internet, it's crazy. But now I'm coming with you with, I'm coming to you with even better information because it has played out pretty much as I expected. And let me show you why it is actually mega risky to buy Ethereum right now. And I think people are getting trapped and they are getting the bone thrown and they're chewing on the bone for a while, but then they will actually figure out that it's poisoned. So let me show you the chart and show you why I believe that is the case. Let's go to trading view over here. And as you can see here, we have the Ethereum chart for the last couple of days. And you see this mega massive candle here. This was, the, the candle happened because Eric Balkunis posted this tweet where he said that the chance of DTF being approved is rising from 25% to 75% because of information he has and so on, right? So that is basically rumors and people bought the rumors and we had a 19% pump. And like that's not something you can predict, right? Because this is something that just happened based on a tweet. But as you can see here, the area before that, it was actually quite bearish, but also accumulation phase, right? Now in, the, in hindsight, you can say that this was an accumulation phase and now it's actually breaking out. But what is going to happen in the future? Because if you didn't buy Ethereum before that and you're thinking about buying it now, why I think that it's actually a pretty bad idea. And also one other thing, why did my strategy buy Ethereum here when I'm saying that it's actually risky to buy it right now? I will tell you all of that. And let's go to Bitcoin to really understand what will happen here, my opinion, what will happen here. And Ethereum uh, got an ETF the same way as Bitcoin got an ETF. And you see here, Bitcoin got an ETF on the 11th of January, and that's as well the bone, right? The bone got thrown so that the retail investor can finally buy the ETF if they don't want to have self-custody or they don't want to use a crypto exchange, but especially for institutions, so they can actually finally buy into the Bitcoin price movement. As you can see here, it's quite easy to follow the chart. The ETF got approved here, and then we had a drop down of 15%. Right, So if we have the same thing happening right now, then this is basically just a bone that is thrown into the wild to capture retail investors who don't know what's happening because the price cannot immediately go to the moon because then otherwise most people will make money and the market is not like that. Okay, The market is to move money from people who don't know what they're doing to people who are prepared and know what they're doing, right? They have a strategy, they have a plan, they understand the market, right? Of course, you're playing against people who have a plan, right? So you have to make sure that you understand the market will not give money for free, okay? You have to know the game, you have to understand the players that are playing this game. So if the same thing is happening right now with Ethereum, the same thing plays out as with Bitcoin, then we have to expect that the bone has been thrown to lure in people that don't know how the market works. So now here, if the bone is the same, has the same outcome as with Bitcoin, then we have to expect a 15% drop or more because Ethereum is more volatile, right? So we have here the bone and 15% would be actually touching this green line and then potentially recovering back to the upside, right? So this is why I believe that it is quite risky to hold Ethereum right now. And I would caution people to buy into Ethereum, especially if your time frame is only a couple of weeks, you have to have a time frame of at least a month or more because in a couple of weeks, it can play out the same way as with Bitcoin where it drops and then it recovers and makes hundred, hundreds of percent. Bitcoin made over 130%, I think, if I remember uh, correctly. I made about 105 off of that completely automatically, by the way. 
And if your time frame is like that, then it's okay. You can buy Ethereum, which is exactly why I'm okay with my strategy buying Ethereum because I'm not expecting it to make money in a couple of hours, right? Or a couple of days. And I'm okay to be in the red a little bit to then actually recover and ride the trend up because the trend has changed to the upside. That is clear, right? Because you can see that here in the chart. We go back to Ethereum, the trend is green, right? If the trend is green, it means that there is a high probability of the trend continuing to the upside, right? So I'm playing the probability game here, you see? So this is what I'm doing, and this is why I'm okay buying Ethereum automatically and also selling it automatically. This is quite important. So this strategy will sell Ethereum for me if it goes in the wrong direction. Yes, I will lose a little bit, but I protect my overall portfolio, overall purchasing power, right? By the way, this is the strategy that I'm talking about all the time. This is a screenshot from TradingView from the desktop. You can pause the video and check them for yourself, but let me show you a few of them. The profit is 2,700% since 2018. All these numbers are since 2018. And the max drawdown is 27.46%. I will leave the other numbers for you here so you can check them. And also, as you can see, it outperforms the asset itself, especially outperforms buy and hold and reduces the downside, which is important for protecting your purchasing power. So this is fully automatic. Like I said, I was not even having any internet in the last couple of days. My strategy bought Ethereum automatically, and I will ride the trend up, hopefully, when it goes up. So this is why I believe that you have to take care. If your strategy is to hold it for a bit longer, then I think you're fine, and you can actually get into the hype. But then don't cry if it goes minus 15% for a couple of weeks because I told you, right? You have to be mentally prepared to survive this kind of stuff. You can even buy more, right, at the bottom if you have at the minus 15 level, right? If you have conviction, do that. I don't do that. I automatically buy and sell and I don't touch it at all because for me that's the best outcome. And it allows my lifestyle to be off screen. I don't like to be trading on the screen, looking at the market news all the time. I don't care. I want to actually have a good life and fully automatically trade and be able to travel the world and, you know, you know, have a coffee with my wife or do whatever I want, right? So that's what I do. But if you want to go and trade this and you want to make the most money possible, then you have to be on the screen, on the news. You have to learn chart analysis. You have to learn chart patterns and you have to control your emotions, which is very hard to do. So you can do that or you can automate and just have a good life at the same time in parallel. So that's what I chose to do, right? So I might not make all the money possible that you can squeeze out of this stupid chart, but at the same time, I don't waste my time in front of the screen either, right? So you choose what you care more about. Everyone is a bit different. That's what I do. So take care of your money because you can get lured into a stupid trade, especially, and I forgot to say that before, but uh, if you leverage trade this, nobody can help you anymore. Like you are lost, okay? Because if you leverage trade this to the upside and you have minus 15%, like we had on Bitcoin, you get destroyed, okay? So don't leverage trade. That's just don't do it, okay? Like what are you doing? You, you're basically giving money for free to the institutions or to the exchange and to people who lend you this money to trade with. So no leverage, longer time horizon, automatic trading, live a good life. Let's go. And let me know down in the comments if you like this kind of video content because I'm traveling quite a lot and I'm not often in my studio anymore. So my uh, editing skills are not needed, right? It's basically videos like that. Uh, and let me know what I can improve if you like them and if you want more of these videos because then I can make more videos if you like it because I don't have to... St like I said, I don't like time on the screen. I want to be away from the screen, okay? So if I can do videos like this and you still enjoy them, then that would be very nice. It would be awesome. I would love it. Okay. Take care of your money. Don't get lured into a trade unless your time horizon is more than a few months. And see you next time on this channel. Make sure to subscribe. This is not financial advice. Have a great life. Bye-bye.